I'd like to call the 25th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good communication is the bridge between confusion and clarity. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are nine present. And uh, all the person Wolf is on his way, so you should be here shortly. Um, next, move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move approval. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The minutes from the last meeting are before us. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to uh, Mayor's appointment. I'll turn it over to our city attorney. Uh, 1.4 is an appointment by the mayor submitting the following appointment for your consideration. John Matiska to be considered for appointment to the library board to fill the unexpired term of Amanda Salazar, whose term expires April 19, 2021. That uh, appointment will lie over. Next is confirmation of mayor's appointments. City attorney. Uh, 1.5 is uh, confirmation of the following appointments submitted by the mayor for your consideration. Uh, Betty Ackley, the older person of District 4, to be considered for appointment to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to fill the unexpired term of Rosemary Trester, whose term expires April 15, 2019. Thank you very much. Alder person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to confirm. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to a presentation. Uh, this is on the Green Tier Annual Report presented by Chad Palachuk, Sheboygan Sustainability Coordinator. Sustainability Coordinator. I have to say, I guess that's my other title. I am also the Director of Planning and Development. And what we wanted to do today is uh, run through our sustainable efforts from the past year. I know the city administrator had forwarded to the members of the council the report that you'll be adopting later on in the agenda. This kind of follows it and gives an overview of where we are. So if you can go to the next slide. So in 2014, the city of Sheboygan became a green tier legacy community. This was an initiative with the uh, League of Wisconsin Municipalities and the Department of Natural Resources. And it was really the collaborative, working collaboratively with other communities on sustainable initiatives that really drew uh, the committee together on um, the the task force at the time, the sustainability task force together on developing a mission and a goal and a plan as to where our sustainable efforts for the community were going to go. So each year we're responsible to submit an annual report uh, to the N Department of Natural Resources reporting our accomplishments for the previous year and that's what this presentation and the report you'll adopt uh, is doing. Next slide. So these are just a little background, these are the communities and counties in the state of Wisconsin that are currently part of the Green Tier Legacy Program. It's really a network of communities and counties. They recently opened up two counties. Um, so there's a, a, a pretty good presence around the lakeshore um, and then separate, it kind of spread out through the rest of the county, uh, the rest of the state. Next slide. So under the Green Tier Charter, these are really the benefits that we get for being part of this group. Um, the networking opportunities with other communities where we can share best practices and things that have worked. Um, if we're applying for any kind of DNR grants or loans, particularly in the uh, Clean Water Fund and Safe Drinking Water, the two programs that wastewater and the water utility use, um, there, we get additional points on those scoring criteria. We're also part of this PACE funding, which is Property Assessed Clean Energy. It's similar to a development incentive, so developers can use it to 
make energy efficient improvements in properties and it can be assessed against their as a property tax so the county uh, Sheboygan County has implemented this one of I think seven or eight counties across the state that's doing that it also allows the city to apply jointly for grant opportunities later on we'll talk about some of those we recently were awarded a tree grant for emerald ash bore um, they've done some energy audits and we're working on a three-year grant with them on health initiatives in the community next slide in 2014 the city uh, council of adopted the city's first sustainability plan so each year's action items that we uh, across all the departments use um, are consistent with this plan um, we're working to update this plan and at the end of 2019 it's a five-year plan so we'll take a look at where we are and where we're going um, and make changes to that next slide so starting with the accomplishments in 2018 uh, under the energy um, there was a two new events that uh, were led particularly with Mayor Vandersteen uh, under around bike month in June there was an event called bike with Mike um, where you it encouraged residents to come out and uh, bike the city and it was kind of a listening session on your bike and then talk taco about biking was held in conjunction with activate and it was an event encouraging people to talk about biking it was held at evergreen uh, park and they ate tacos and talked about the biking um, in the community and what could be improved and what we're doing well and all of that so there was a very well received event next slide um, we're also working this year uh, we were accepted into the soul smart initiative which is a designation to say that we are a solar uh, a solar recognized okay community and that we're removing local barriers to implementing solar technology so right in 2019 staff is working through um, that scoring system and hoping by the end of the year uh, to be officially designated and it's it's one of these things where any type of developer there's certain types of developers that are looking for developing in communities that have these type of designations next slide the Department of Public Works uh, continued with conversion of city-owned lights into LED fixtures so 393 light fixtures were converted to LED um, that's an ongoing uh, process but there's definitely energy savings that are had by these conversions next slide under the water side of things as it relates to the accomplishments the mayor and the water utility rolled out a Wyland foundation pledge that pledged Sheboygan that Sheboygan residents would lower their water consumption and energy consumption last year was the first year in that um, pledge that the pledge has just come out recently um, I'm sure Mayor Vandersteen will talk about it in his comments that we're the city's embarking on it again uh, in April of this year um, and working to you know lower water consumption and energy we did rain continue to sell rain barrels for residents at uh, rain barrels in the kits at Maywood Environmental Park um, that's been an ongoing project as a place where people can go and get um, get reduced cost rain barrels if they want to collect rainwater anti-icing prior to snow events you've seen that with the Department of Public Works spraying the streets and then continued street sweeping um, 32 weeks totaling 723.3 tons of debris was collected as well as 338 tons of debris from catch basins next slide under the recycling and composting this these are statistics again for the, the Department of Public Works um, 3582 tons of recycling goods were collected 182 tires 234 tons of scrap metal metal 10,700 gallons of waste oil uh, 1734 tons of leaves and then 2830 tons of yard waste so this is the stuff that happens as part of the city's collection um, area and the pickup as well as Christmas tree recycling that happens after the holiday season and then um, the city continues to work with a, a prana shredding service as a document shredding service to um, recycle and, and destroy documents next slide under the community initiatives um, we held our second year of rock the block events in partnership with the habitat for humanity group we held our third year of fun the fund for lake michigan adopt a beach and adopt a habitat in conjunction with camp wicota this was a grant that we had received to bring all third and eighth grade students to the lakefront to learn about 
the beach ecosystem as well as habitat. Um, so that program has been very well received with the Sheboygan Area School District. And then in late 2018, we became part of the network known as the Wisconsin Active Together, which is a network that's encouraging people to get out and be active in their community with bicycling and um, pedestrian walking and those types of things. So we're just new into that uh, network. Uh, we were one of seven communities in the state that joined it in 20, late 2018. Next slide. Um, in partnership with the uh, Department of Public Works, the Adopt-a-Park, Adopt-a-Trail was implemented um, in our parks with a number of, in trails with a number of projects underway. And the Mead Public Library held a winter green event that I'm, I believe was related to seed sharing and some other things that they, and programming that they did in the uh, February to get ready for the spring season. Next slide. Under land use, um, city staff worked with the Bay Lake Regional Planning Commission to complete a city code review for green infrastructure to make sure that um, our code or our code of ordinances, both our zoning code and our municipal code um, weren't becoming hindrances or barriers for people to imp imp implement green infrastructure improvements. So we're working through that uh, today. Mayor Vandersteen sat in on these meetings with us and uh, we'll be probably coming forward in 2019 working with the city attorney's office on some changes to our ordinances to um, make it easier for people to implement green infrastructure. So these could be things like rain gardens and infiltration beds and those types of things, particularly as it relates to stormwater management. Um, in part, in partnership with the Green Tier Initiative, we received $20,000 for new trees to replace emerald ash borers. So that was a benefit of being as part of the network. They applied for the grant and they'll be funneling us the money here later in 2019. And then as we all know, the renovation of City Hall into a more energy efficient building. Next slide. So that's it for the year. The report is in your packet. If there's any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But um, it's a collaboration between amongst a number of departments. And uh, we continue to you know, do stuff in the most sustainable manner as we can. So thank you. Thank you very much, Chad. Appreciate all your work in that area. Well, we have a double header tonight. So the next presentation is on our GPS bus tracking system that was uh, revealed and opened up about a week ago. And Derek Mank from uh, Shoreline Metro will be here to present that. How do I get a podium? Can everybody see me? <laughs> uh, I'm Derek Mink. I'm the director of transit and parking. A little humor. At transit, we like to have fun. Uh, I'm here tonight to uh, talk about our bus tracker app that we um, launched on March 18th, uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, really exciting for the first time uh, in Sheboygan Transit, Shoreline Metro history. We have um, a convenient app that allows our customers to locate their bus. Um, really no more waiting extensive times out on the corner in the cold or in the snow or in the rain. Um, we provide a, a convenient way to uh, track your bus. Next slide. So what is Bus Tracker? Well, it's a real-time app used to view location of our buses on route. Um, it uses uh, GPS technology to map vehicles um, on Charlie Metro's bus routes. You can view the bus number, uh, bus number of the bus on the assigned route and view a list of stops, uh, time points, if you will, uh, along each route. Uh, it's available for your uh, Android or iOS devices as well as PC. Um, and it does not uh, display driver uh, information or any personal information. That's kind of a disclaimer. Comes with the, comes with the territory. So, next slide. Um, so, what's a little different about it is it's a traditional website link. Um, the cost of an app is is quite a bit more expensive. But the way uh, we partnered with Unite GPS, who does this uh, for several transit agencies, they create a uh, web link that's uh, very mobile friendly that you can turn into a shortcut app on your uh, device's home screen. So, um, creating it, uh, recommended uh, browsers are Safari, Chrome, or Samsung Internet. Um, the web link is uh, listed there and with some screenshots of what you might see on either device. Next screen, please. 
So just a, a quick shortcut here um, on Android. Um, if you open your browser, enter the uh, web link in the right hand corner, upper right hand corner, you can click to add to home screen. This is a shortcut um, that will be permanently on your device's home screen. And next slide. And the same thing for iOS, just a little bit different for Apple iPhones or iPads. Next slide. So uh, just a real quick rundown. Um, on the screen, you will see a list of our routes. They're all color coded uh, based on the routes. So you'll see the route banner. Um, you will see a couple uh, things on screen. You'll see the stop list up on top. You'll see the time points along the route. You'll see the bus route itself. And then the actual location of the bus out on route. Next screen. So enjoy. Uh, just some uh, pointers uh, for those that are using it. Um, you can click and press on the bus location to reveal the bus number. Um, you can zoom in as far as you'd like. Actually, if you zoom in far enough, there are property and house numbers, which is actually really convenient for uh, knowing exactly where you are on the street. Um, bus location is in real time. Um, we dare you to test it, um, but in all regards, it's within three seconds of the actual location, and it refreshes every five seconds. So we've challenged it. Um, the active bus will uh, we have um, will appear off route if it hasn't been to the transfer station for the part uh, for the start of the next route, um, and it uses uh, GPS technology, which we all know is technology. It's prone to fail, so um, it's very reliable, and we hope we never have to use that disclaimer. But um, it is uh, it is subject to malfunction that at times. Next slide, please. So enjoy. Um, there's a couple ways. Uh, we have some how-to guides that you can get right off of our website that'll take you step by step on how to create the mobile device, everything that I've just talked about in this presentation. Um, so check out our website and uh, you can get more information. Next slide. So uh, just some initial uh, comments that we've gotten back. So the real-time chatter on Facebook. Um, as you can imagine, people like it. Um, our staff love it, so um, we hope all of Sheboygan um, uses this and uh, relies on it, and we hope to continue to work with organizations on this wonderful technology. Next slide, please. So I'm just going to show you uh, kind of a real-time uh, uh, thing right now. If you want to click on 10 South for me, the banner that, yeah. <coughs> So the wonderful part about this is I just have to say this, that every time I look at this, it's always at quarter two and quarter after the hour when our buses are at the transfer station. I have no idea what's with my timing, my internal body clock, but every time I'm at my computer and I'm looking at it, it's always quarter after and quarter two. So again, this is gonna be kind of boring right now because it's at our bus station because of course it's quarter after the hour. Um, but you get a kind of a sense of, of what's going on. So you can minimize banners by clicking on them. Um, um, Meredith, if you want to click on that again. And then collapse uh, like 10 south, or 3 south if you would. So it's just, it's pretty easy to maneuver between the, between the routes themselves just by clicking on the banner head and uh, looking for the bus. So, so that's that. Um, so we're really happy again, excited. Um, if you have any questions or uh, would like any assistance, feel free to give us a call or check out our website. Anybody have any questions? Thank you very much, Derek. All right, thank you. Next, we'll move on to a public forum. Do we have anyone this evening? There is no one. Thank you. Next is uh, Mayor's announcement. <coughs> I'd like to invite up some special guests tonight, members of the Lutheran High basketball team, if you please uh, come to the front. These gentlemen have done an amazing job, uh, went down to state and won the Division Five basketball championship trophy. And tonight we have a proclamation to present them from the office of the mayor of the city of Sheboygan, proclamation. Whereas the members of the Lutheran High School basketball team include Robbie Michael, Matthew Witte, Jackson Holzmeyer, Malachi Staple, 
uh, Graydon Grabowski, Michael Berger, Joseph Thomas Schultz, Max Leonard, Delvin Barnstable, Jonah Juris, Jacob Ognovic, Casey Verhagen, Zachary Verhelst, Colin Gradalkis, and are coached by Nick Verhagen. And whereas the team was top seeded and second ranked, they finished the season with a 27 and 2 record in a winning state for the first time since 2012. The Crusaders are also the first boys team from Sheboygan to claim two WIA state titles. And whereas the team defeated the Columbus Catholic Dons 77 to 69 on Saturday, March 16th of 2019 in the WIAA Division 5 state title game at the Cole Center in Madison. I now therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby wish to congratulate the Lutheran High School boys basketball team on winning, winning the Division 5 state title. And I uh, have a special proclamation for the school and copies for all the boys on the team. So congratulations to everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. And I'd like to present this to the coach. Thank you. It is an honor and privilege to be here. And uh, thank you guys for what you do for the city of Sheboygan. It's just uh, much appreciated. And I know it's a lot of hard work that you do. Um, tonight we've, there's three of us, and I, I'm the principal and athletic director of Sheboygan Lutheran, so uh, uh, but a lot of our kids play spring sports, or some, these guys included, play AU basketball, and some of my practices tonight, and just our season's over, but there are other seasons that have begun, so, uh, but I just appreciate the, these young men, and, and all of them uh, for their work, and our whole student body, and I ho we hope we made uh, Sheboygan proud of uh, what we did uh, at that state tournament, um, our kids, they work hard, they, they win with class, and uh, they've represented our city well, and I just appreciate that and appreciate being here tonight. So thank you. I also want to go over a few of the details from the spring election. Congrats to Trey Mitchell, and welcome back for a second term on the city council. And congratulations to Barbara Feldy on her election to serve as alder person representing the first district in the next term. Barb's in the back. And I want to thank everybody for the work they did to promote the referendum, which passed on the dark store by almost 90% with a favorable vote. So that was just amazing. Uh, we got a call from the league today and they really appreciated the work that we did to keep that issue alive because all the other uh, referendums were held uh, back in, uh, in, in the November election. It got kind of old and this is keeping it fresh in all of our legislators' minds as they go through uh, the process of approving the budget and the legislation that's before them this year. And as Chad mentioned, the Mayor's Water Challenge for Water Conservation is starting on April 1st. So we missed a couple of days, but we ask that people consider uh, going online to mywaterpledge.com and taking the Water Pledge, and that'll be available through April 30th. They have some prizes that people can win, and they also have uh, a drawing for a new uh, a vehicle uh, for one of the... Um, not-for-profits in the area that, uh, th that people can re suggest. And again, this will be you know, across all the states that, uh, that do this. We also have Money Smart Week coming up, the week of April 6th. Many of these seminars are going to be held at the Mead Library, and you can go to moneyspartsheboygan.com events in order to get a complete list of the different seminars that will be presented. Now, several of the documents on the agenda will be referred to the Committee of the Whole, and Ryan Sorensen has set a meeting for next Monday, April 8th at 6 o'clock in this room, so mark your schedules for that. And I also want to remind the public that winter parking alternate site overnight parking has been in place until April 30th. It's a month longer than normal, and uh, the, we want to see how this works, and so we're going to continue this uh, th this year, and then we can evaluate it further if needed. And I also want to remind any, everyone it's 61 days until our council meeting in the new city hall on June 3rd. Thank you. Okay, next uh, we have some hearings. Item 
is hearing number 9 of 1819 pursuant to a notice published in the personal notices sent out by the finance director. There is a hearing scheduled for this evening to confirm and exercise the police power in making an assessment for those benefited properties against which assessments are proposed in parking to district number 1, parking assessment district number 2, and parking assessment district 5. Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard? Is there anyone here who wishes to be heard? Okay, I'm sorry, there's also a hearing including uh, district number four. Is there anyone who wishes to be heard? Alderperson Wolf? Thank, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to close. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Um, uh, would the clerk please call a roll? Nice. Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll go on to the consent agenda, which will in include items 3.2 through 3.12. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. And thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items on the consent agenda? Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. I just have a question on 3.11 on the... Uh, uh, truck that uh, Public Work want, wants to buy. I didn't see any information in the documents about the cost, and I believe that's I believe that's the one that's going to be leased. Uh, uh, turn it over to uh, Director of Public Works, David Beeble. Yes, this is the the sewer vector. Our lease is coming up, and actually, mm -hmm. what this document is is just giving them um, basically our intent at this point to renew the lease. Okay. So once that becomes available next year, we will have much more detailed information on that new lease. But the new lease that we're looking at starting in uh, 2020 next year, it will be less expensive than our current lease and we'll have a updated newer vehicle as well. Thank you. Are there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Older person to Laglio. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to reports of officers, item 4.1 is RO number 237 of 1819 by the Director of Planning and Development and Sustainability Coordinator Chad Pelichek uh, submitting the 2018 Green Tier Legacy Communities Annual Report and outlining the City of Sheboygan's in 2018 Sustainable Accomplishments and reporting that the document will be submitted to the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those, would the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.2 through 4.5 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 202 of 1819 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing emergency hydraulic oil repair and related equipment for the A Street drawbridge. Alder person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? 
Seeing none, please proceed. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.4 will be referred to various committees under reports of committees. Item 6.1 is RC number 282 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred pursuant to RO number 234 of 1819 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications and recommends granting the licenses. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 283 of 1819 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. To whom was referred direct referral, RO number 235 of 1819 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications and recommends granting the licenses. Alder Person Donahue. Move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Any discussion? Seeing none, will the Clerk please call the roll? <coughs> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Um, item 6.3 um, is going to be referred to the Committee of the Whole. And item 6.4 is RC number 285 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. To whom is referred direct referral resolution number 195 of 1819 by all the persons Grinfleisch and Bourne, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an intergovernmental cooperative agreement for the development and operation of an Aurora Medical Center of Sheboygan County between the City of Sheboygan and Sheboygan Water Utility and the Village of Kohler with regard to the land located on the northwest corner of Taylor Drive and Union Avenue and recommends approving the resolution with the updated agreement. Uh, first of all, let's get a motion on the floor. Alderperson Rainfleisch. I move we accept and adopt pass the resolution as amended with additional language. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. I'd like to turn it over to the city attorney uh, to kind of explain uh, the changes in the language. And uh, we apologize that this wasn't on the uh, board docs because the, these documents were being revised yet today as our meeting approached. City attorney. So on the intergovernmental agreement, uh, uh, as uh, uh, Alderman noted, uh, there are some changes from the document that was approved at the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, nine days ago. Uh, the primary uh, changes uh, come in Section 5, and uh, you do have the new document in front of you, but there is one additional change that was made even after we printed off the copies, uh, and that change is uh, in paragraph 5A, um, about, uh, uh, about 10 lines down, where it talks about the village has made a formal request to the city and the Sheboygan Water Utility for a, th a third wholesale water connections for access to the water main owned by the Sheboygan Water Utility and located in, it'll say, in, in Union Avenue and Taylor Drive. Uh, the changes in uh, uh, five primarily come down to two things. Uh, first of all, there's been some discussion about exactly where the wholesale water connection, where we are providing water to the village of Kohler where those exactly will be and where the meters will be. <coughs> and after some lengthy discussion, I think we got actually an even better um, language than, than we had as of last Monday. Uh, in essence, what has been agreed is that the wholesale water connections and the meters will be, uh, the meter for those connections will be at or near the actual physical connections. There had been some talk 
about allowing the meters to be inside a building. There are some good reasons for doing that. Uh, but in the end, that didn't seem to be uh, really the proper option, given some other things that Aurora and the Village of Kohler are perhaps looking to do inside their campus. And we don't want to be involved in any of that. We just want to provide them the water and what they do with that water and how they bill for that. That's the problem with the Village of Kohler and, and, and Aurora. So that is, in essence, what's happening. We're providing them water. We're providing it in a loop system so it's in two places. We're metering it. Uh, very close to where those connections occur so that we're actually billing for the exact amount of water uh, that's being used and any changes that they make inside their system is sort of out of our hands. Uh, as a result of that, there are some changes as well to some of the issues having to do uh, with uh, water connection uh, charges. So there have been uh, some changes to that and some changes to what might happen with other village water uh, customers because uh, it's anticipated again that none of that really is uh, involves us at all. Um, those are really the only changes since uh, the, uh, the Finance and Personnel Committee meeting. There were a couple of changes between the last council meeting and Finance and Personnel that had to do with uh, 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 some of the details of the intersection at Union Avenue and Taylor Drive as well as some of the details on uh, the cost of law enforcement services, but those were all updated as of uh, last Monday. Thank you for that explanation. Is there any further discussion or questions? All the person born? Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I just want to mention to my fellow council members that I reviewed this extensively before we had our finance and personnel <laughs> committee meeting, and uh, I think it's a very good agreement for all of the parties involved, uh, and I think very, very good for the city. Uh, I want to thank uh, City Administrator Hoffland, the City Attorney, and all of the team that worked on this because I think it's a very good agreement. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Okay, seeing none, uh, I'll ask the clerk to call a roll on item 6.4. Ten eyes. Motion passes. Moving on to item 6.5 is RC number 286 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 196 of 1819 by Alder Persons Reinfleisch and Born, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the redevelopment agreement between Advocate Aurora Health Inc. Uh, and the City of Sheboygan with regard to the property located at 2629 North 7th Street and recommends approving the resolution with the updated agreement. Alder Person Reinfleisch. I move that we accept and adopt the passive resolution as amended. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. City Attorney, did you want to give us a recap? Yes, and so the amendments, uh, again, uh, things that have changed since the Monday Finance and Personnel Committee, um, they're a little more uh, significant, uh, or at least throughout the entire document, but again, I think we have a better document even than we had on Monday in front of the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, the primary changes are as follows. Uh, we changed the definition of the project in Article 1, just to make it clear, we're kind of dividing uh, the project into a couple of different phases. There's the demolition phase when, when uh, Aurora will uh, demolish the buildings at the old site, uh, this, the sale of the property by Aurora to a developer, and then the ultimate redevelopment of the property, which we're calling the redevelopment phase. Uh, in the overview in, in Article 2, then we've made some changes there, again, to reflect uh, that three phase process uh, for the project uh, and also to clarify uh, what it is that we're expecting to be done uh, during the demolition uh, phase. Uh, we're looking not only to, to remove the material, or, uh, to, to knock down the building to make sure the materials are all removed from the site and that the site is restored to a flat dust-free environment that is suitable for residential construction. And that's important because what we don't want to have happen is, you know, what happened 40 years ago, for example, uh, with the, um, the brewery site that we're, we're dealing with now where things were just d sort of dumped into the ground and we don't want those kinds of things uh, to happen. Uh, under the uh, third article, Undertakings of Aurora, 
Uh, we have made it very clear that during the demolition phase, no concrete, stone, brick, masonry is going to be allowed to be buried on the site. Uh, that in order to say that they have completed uh, the, that stage of the demolition, they're actually going to have to provide to the city a report prepared by a properly licensed and credentialed soils engineer, confirming that the soils in the area are properly compacted and capable of supporting residential construction uh, in in sort of a, in, in the same way that the, the other residential areas in the surrounding neighborhood uh, are done. So that, again, that really kind of relates to making sure that the demolition is done right and that the soils are prepared properly. <clears throat> in Article 5, the third party redevelopment, this then gets to that third phase where there's going to be uh, redevelopment. Uh, we've added a provision in which Aurora agrees that if it does sell the property to uh, a developer before they've completed, substantially completed that demolition phase, so before we get to the redevelopment, while we're still in the demolition <coughs> phase, uh, as a condition of approval of the sale, the city may require that one or the other, the, uh, the seller or the buyer of the site, would have to provide to the city a demolition bond in the amount of $3 million. Uh, in essence, uh, they would post a bond uh, at the value of $3 million that would uh, ensure that if somebody just stops the job, the city would be able to go in, finish the job, and be paid um, to uh, finish the job of demolishing uh, the building. Uh, finally, there, are, there, there were just some changes at the very end, updating uh, information about uh, to whom the documents are going at Aurora uh, Advocate Health. Um, not particularly important to us, but uh, important certainly to the document. So those are the amendments since the Finance and Personnel Committee last Monday. Thank you very much. Under questions, Alderperson Boren. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, again, uh, I think this is a very good uh, document for the city. It's, it's great that we can get Aurora to, uh, once their new hospital is built, to, uh, to tear this down. And the other thing that is great about this is being that it's uh, going to be zoned for residential, we'll eventually have some very nice single family homes up in that area that will be on the property tax rolls. So that's also very important that when that day comes, it'll add a lot of property tax value to that, to that uh, area. So again, I want to thank uh, the city administrator and his team and the city attorney for work on this. Thank you very much. Alder Person Boren. Any other discussion? Alder Person Donahue? Um, and I don't think I gave it a close enough reading, but are there any environmental considerations? Have you done phase one or two, or I'm not you, us, but Aurora on this? We, we have not. And so the primary environmental concerns that we, re we relate to here have to do with the demolition. So. <coughs> It, is it possible that there are other environmental issues already at the site? Yes, it is. What we're primarily doing here is making sure that we're not adding to that by the way that the demolition takes place. Um, there is always the potential, at least for, there's going to have to be some uh, environmental work done at the site. I, I mean, I presume there's some lead and asbestos issues? Yeah. I, mean, I don't the think hospital we know is... that for sure, um, okay. but I think we can make some <clears throat> educated highly educated guesses. Does our indemnification clause cover us? Um, well, we're not going to be the owner of, <coughs> of this site. So uh, we, we should not, we, we shouldn't have any concerns in that regard. The only place where we might have potential concern is again, if we have to step in and do the demolition because Aurora and or its redeveloper sort of fails to do what they promised to do. In that unlikely event, we, would, we may have to step in, but again, that demolition bond is designed to cover all of those costs, and that would include the costs that we would incur as far as environmental issues. Again, we wouldn't own the property, we would merely be demolishing it, but there is always the potential when you're demolishing a building that you have to deal yeah, with. Yeah, uh, I mean, issues. I think that's, that is potentially a, but you think the demolition bond, which is substantial, will We'll cover our interests then? I, I believe it will. Okay. We, we compared the costs of other demolitions and three million is on the high end but it is not unprecedented. Um, Richmond, Virginia for example, there was a hospital uh, that had actually cost them four million to, to demolish sure. but it's a, a little bigger scale than, than this one but yeah, um, yeah I think th three million is a high end but it's not it's not crazy high. Uh, because I think 
you know, ongoing, you can, you can be thinking about, you know, the discovery of wonderful little gifts all over the property and uh, that a developer is not interested or starts and abandons or something like that. So, right. I mean, that's worst case scenario, but um, I mean, a hospital has stuff. <laughs> Yep. And you know, so I, I um, so that's good. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Any other questions or discussion? <coughs> Seeing no hands, will the clerk please call the roll on item And I's. Motion passes. Item 6.6 .6 is RC number 287 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred a direct referral resolution number 197 of 1819 by <coughs> Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen authorizing emergency slope repair along the Sheboygan River near New Jersey Avenue and South 17th Street and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass resolution. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.7 is RC number 288 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred General Ordinance number 50 of 1819 by Alderpersons Wolf and Sorensen amending section 74-57 of the Sheboygan Municipal Code with regard to locations in which the prohibition of glass beverage container does not apply and recommends approving the substitute ordinance. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt and pass substitute ordinance. Thank you for that motion in support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? <clears throat> Ten eyes. The motion passes. Item 6.8 and 6.9 both deal with uh, the new garbage cart system that Public Works is proposing, and those will be referred to the Committee of the Whole. And item 6.10 uh, will be referred to the new council. Under general ordinances, uh, other matters received after the agenda is published, I'll turn it again over to our city attorney. 8.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2019, December 31, 2019, April 14, 2020, and June 30, 2020. That will be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee. 8.2 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Visit Sheboygan making various requests for Sheboygan concerts and 4th of July events. That will also be referred to the licensing hearings and public safety committee and the public works committee. 8.3 is a resolution by Alderpersons Rindfleisch and Boren directing the purchasing agent to seek requests for proposal for an operational and departmental structure study of the City of Sheboygan Finance Department and Human Resources Department. That will be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 8.4 is a resolution by Alderpersons Rindfleisch and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract for the installation of new floor coverings at Mead Public Library. Referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. And 8.5 is a resolution by Alderpersons Rindfleisch and Boren authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a contract for certain roof repairs at the Mead Public Library. It will also be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. This might take a second. Yeah, go ahead. Really? I'm so excited. I will move to convene in closed session under the exemption contained in section 1985 sub 1 sub e with stats where competitive or bargaining reasons required a closed session related to a possible developer's incentive 
for the former Kings Kingsbury development. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Could the clerk please call the roll for closed session. Ten ayes. Motion passes. We'll take a three minute recess and reconvene. For our viewers at home, uh, the council meeting transmission will end. We'll be adjourning in closed session.